Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce the messenger lecturer, Professor Richard P. Feynman of the California Institute of Technology. Professor Feynman is a distinguished theoretical physicist, and he's done much to bring order out of the confusion which has marked much of the spectacular development in physics during the post-war period. Among his honors and awards, I will mention only the Albert Einstein Award in 1954. This is an award which is made every third year and which includes a gold medal and a substantial sum of money. Professor Feynman did his undergraduate work at MIT and his graduate work at Princeton. He worked on the Manhattan Project at Princeton and later at Los Alamos. He was appointed an assistant professor here at Cornell in 1944 although he did not assume residence until the end of the war. I thought it might be interesting to see what was said about him when he was appointed at Cornell, so I searched the minutes of our board of trustees. And there's absolutely no record of his appointment. <laughs> there are, however, some 20 references uh, to leaves of absence, uh, salary, and promotions one reference interested me especially. On July 31, 1945, the chairman of the physics department wrote the dean of the Arts College stating that Dr. Feynman is an outstanding teacher and investigator, the equal of whom develops infrequently. The The chairman suggested that an annual salary of $3,000 was a bit too low for a distinguished faculty member <laughs> and recommended that Professor Feynman's salary be increased $900. <laughs> the dean, in an act of unusual generosity and with complete disregard for the solvency of the university, crossed out the $900 and made it an even thousand. <laughs> you can see that we thought highly of Professor Feynman even then. <laughs> Feynman took up residence here at the end of 1945 and spent five highly productive years on our faculty. He left Cornell in 1950 and went to Caltech, where he has been ever since. Before I let him talk, I want to tell you just a little bit more about him. Three or four years ago, he started teaching a beginning physics course at Caltech, and the result has added a new dimension to his fame. His lectures are now published in two volumes, and they represent a refreshing approach to the subject. In the preface of the published lectures, there's a picture of Feynman <laughs> performing happily on the bongo drums. My Caltech friends tell me that he sometimes drops in on the Los Angeles night spots and takes over the work of the drummer, but Professor Feynman tells me that that's not so. Another of his specialties is safe cracking. <laughs> One legend says that he once opened a locked safe in a secret establishment, removed the secret document, and left a note saying, guess who? <laughs> I could tell you about the time that he learned Spanish before he went to give a series of lectures in Brazil, but I won't. <laughs> this, this, gives me enough, this gives you enough background, I think, so let me say that I'm delighted to welcome Professor Feynman back to Cornell. His general topic is the nature of physical law, and his topic for tonight is the law of gravitation, an example of physical law. Professor Feynman. It's odd, but in the infrequent occasions when I've been called upon in a formal place to play the bongo drums, 
The introducer never seems to find it necessary to mention that I also do theoretical physics. <laughs> I believe that's probably uh, that we respect the arts more than the sciences. The artists of the Renaissance said that man's main concern should be for man. And yet, uh, there are some other things of interest in the world. Even the artists appreciate sunsets and the ocean waves and the march of the stars across the heavens. And there is some reason then to talk of other things sometimes. As we look into these things, we get an ascetic pleasure from them directly on observation. But there's also a rhythm and a pattern between the phenomena of nature which isn't apparent to the eye but only to the eye of uh, analysis and it's these rhythms and patterns which we call physical laws what I want to talk about in a series of lectures is the general characteristics of these physical laws that's even another level if you will of higher generality over the laws themselves and it's uh, really all I am talking about is nature as seen as a result of detailed analysis. But only the most overall general qualities of nature is what I mainly wish to speak about. Now, such a topic has a tendency to become too philosophical because it becomes so general that uh, a person talks in such...